The world is repeatedly reminded by the followers of Muhammad that the Quran is not only a spiritual revelation, but actually contains almost all knowledge that human beings need to conduct their everyday lives. How accurate are these declarations? Muhammadan scholars assert in no uncertain terms that Muhammad had full knowledge of almost everything under the sun. They have hundreds if not thousands of books printed trying desperately to prove the unprovable. The following is only a small sample of traditions. Let our listeners make their own mind up. Al-Baqarah 2.189 They ask you about the new moons. Say, they are but signs to mark fixed seasons in the affairs of men and for Hajj pilgrimage. Allah created the moon so that the Hajj can be performed on time by the followers of Muhammad. Al-Kahf 18.83 They ask you about Dhul Qurnayn, Alexander the Great. Say, I will cite something of his story. We give him authority in the land and means of accomplishing his goals. So he followed the path until he reached the setting place of the sun. He saw that it set in black, muddy, hot water. Near it he found a people. As our listeners know, we receive a lot of email and videos attempting to prove the mathematical and astronomical miracles of the Quran, from the speed of light and nuclear energy to outer space explorations. The verse above, in unambiguous Arabic, is asserting that Allah, the all-knowing, is informing Muhammad that the sun sets in a puddle of murky water on earth. For those followers of Muhammad who are listening and like to play with numbers, please be aware that the sun is over one million times bigger than the earth and yet, according to Muhammad's Quran, it sits every evening in a puddle of murky water. Of course, we are willingly ignoring its gravitation and temperature to suit this verse. Al-Anbiya 21.26 Don't the unbelievers see that the heavens and earth were joined together in one piece before we clove them asunder? Will they not believe? And we have set on the earth mountains as stabilizers, lest the earth should convulse without them. The verse is not only illogical, but also contrary to the Bible, which is the only source of the creation process that Muhammad is alluding to. It is illogical because nowhere in human history was there a report regarding the heavens and the earth being joined and then separated. And once more, we are willingly ignoring the impossibility of such a scenario. Moreover, Muhammad's Quran, in its infinite wisdom, has concluded that Allah created the mountains to act as stabilizers to hold the earth together. These stories and ideas are, as usual, the product and conclusions that emanated entirely from Muhammad's own vivid but totally illogical and uncomprehending imagination. Al-Mulk 67.3 We created seven heavens, one above the other. Muhammad, can you see any fault in Ar-Rahman's creation? We have adorned the lowest skies with lamps and we have made them missiles to drive away the devils and against the stone satans. Maybe I have missed something in my study of the Bible, because as far as I know, there is no mention of even two heavens, let alone seven. Did Allah forget to mention this to Moses in his Torah? What are these missiles that are scaring and warding off devils? What and who are the stone satans? The enigma deepens with every ayah. Bukhari Hadith 4.421 I walked hand in hand with the Prophet when the sun was about to set. We did not stop looking at it. The Prophet asked, Do you know where the sun goes at sunset? I replied, Allah and his apostle know best. He said, It travels until it falls down and prostrates itself underneath the throne. Allah will order the sun to return whence it has come, and so the sun will rise in the west. And that is the interpretation of the statement of Allah in the Quran. Even the oldest civilization upon earth knew that the sun rises in the east and sets in the West. But of course, they must have all been wrong. Tabari Volume 1.204 I asked the Prophet, Where was Allah before his creation? Muhammad replied, He was in a cloud with no air underneath or above it. And all of us thought we need air to have clouds, silly, ignorant fools that we are. Tabari Volume 1.219 When Allah wanted to create the creation, he brought forth smoke from the water. The smoke hovered loftily over it, 
He called it heaven. Then he dried out the water and made it earth. He split it and made it seven earths on Sunday. He created the earth upon a big fish, that being the fish mentioned in the Quran. By the pen, the fish was in the water. The water was upon the back of a small rock. The rock was on the back of an angel. The angel was on a big rock. The big rock was in the wind. The fish became agitated. As a result, the earth quaked. So Allah anchored the mountains and made it stable. This is why the Quran says, Allah made for the earth firmly anchored mountains, lest it shake you up. It should be apparent to even the most simple than our minds that before the creation, there could not have been either water, smoke, or anything else for that matter. There really is not much that we can possibly add upon the remainder of this creation story as explained by Muhammad, the greatest and most knowledgeable of all the prophets. Tabari 1.233 The Messenger said, When Allah was done with his creation, he created two sons from the light of his throne. His foreknowledge told him, that he would efface one and change it to a moon, so the moon is smaller in size. As usual, Muhammad's thought processes and logic leave a lot to be desired. In this instance, when Allah was done with his creation, should mean that he finished the process of creation. Hence, why did he continue with the creation of the sun and the moon if he had already finished? Moreover, and even more important, since Muhammad is only plagiarizing from the Bible regarding the story of creation, then yet again he is wrong and misleading his ignorant listeners because in the Bible the sun and the moon were actually created on the fourth day and definitely not after the creation. Genesis 1.14 God said, Let there be luminaries in the firmament of the heaven to separate between the day and the night. And God made the two great luminaries, the greater luminary to dominate the day and the lesser to dominate the night. And there was evening and there was morning, a fourth day. It is obvious that Muhammad's Allah cannot possibly be the same as the God of Israel. Tabari 1.234 Allah thus sent Gabriel to drag his wing three times over the face of the moon, which at the time was a sun. He effaced its luminosity and left the light in it. Tabari 1.235 Allah's Apostle said, Allah created an ocean three farsakhs, 918 kilometers removed from the heavens. Waves contained. It stands in the air by the command of Allah. No drop of it is spilled. Tabari 1.332 The sun and the moon were in eclipse for seven days and nights. It must have been only in Arabia that they suffered total darkness for seven days and nights. With such lucid depth of knowledge, one cannot possibly add any further comments to Muhammad's cosmic explanations and his current followers' undeniable belief in his genius, even with all of the 21st century's actual knowledge. What is most frightening and disturbing of all is the fact that those of Muhammad's followers who are listening would rather get angry with our statements than actually giving them food for thought and reflection about the veracity of the Qur'an and hadiths and Muhammad's supreme knowledge of everything.